Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Season 3, Episode 3 of my Trapping Season. Uh, first, this thanks for everybody who watches and sub subscribes to me. Appreciate it. Uh, second, uh, something going on between Google and YouTube or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I used to get notifications anytime somebody left me a comment or a question or something like that. And that has come to an end. So I basically have to go and search for comments and stuff. So if I haven't gotten to a comment and answered a comment or answered a question, uh, I apologize. I'm sure I search them out as best I can. So maybe they'll get it straightened out to where I get a notification. I still get notifications if someone subscribes, but nothing when anybody leaves a comment. Now I'm not sure why. So apologize if I haven't answered a question or responded back to a comment. Uh, another thing, a couple people asked me to do a video on how I skin out a canine, either a fox or a coyote. I just haven't had enough time to devote to it to, to do a really good video. So I want, I just don't want to just hack into one and, and speed through it. I want to try to actually show what I do. So when I get a coyote or a fox and enough time, I'm going to try to do a good video on that. Uh, a couple other guys asked me to show how I do a remake, so I, I got that coming up in this video. And also in this video, I got a couple more coyotes and a raccoon, and you're still plugging along. Thanks again for people watching. So we'll go out in the line, check some things out there, and then we'll come back here to the shed for a wrap up, and I'll show you some of the furs I've caught so far this year. So let's go out in the line for a while. Good morning, folks. I still don't have any more sets out, but I am still managing to pick up coyotes in these, this same area. My fifth coyote of the year. Unbelievable, I've caught five coyotes right in this area in the first few weeks. And this is a bigger coyote than the other ones. Over there is where I caught two coyotes. And I set this one outside the catch circle, well, about 15 yards outside the catch circle. And bigger coyote than the last two I caught. Got it in a number two bridger. Ooh, only got a couple toes in there. I gotta get this guy dispatched and get out of here. I gotta take my wife to a doctor's appointment today. And I'll be back later to show you this guy in the shed. I still have another fresh set over there though. And again, folks, on location. This is what it's all about, in my opinion. There's a trail right through here, and right on the other side of them, there's another four-wheeler trail. They travel these old roads and stuff. I gotta get this guy dispatching out of here, though. Okay, hopefully this is taking good. It's just starting to crack daylight here. Thanks for watching. Well, here's the uh, coyote I caught this morning. It, uh, it's definitely bigger than the last two I caught. Another male, so I got four four males and one female so far. Fur is actually not too bad. The last three that I've caught, got, they typically have ticks right up here around their neck. I can feel a pretty good pile of ticks here. I guess that's where they can't scratch a whole lot. Down here, the fur feels pretty thick. So, have to get this guy skinned out. Get them on board. Uh, a couple guys asked me to do a video of me how I skin a coyote and stuff. I do this one and I do a video, but it's going to take a while. And I just had a very busy day taking away to the doctor. I actually have venison canning right now. And I got to get this guy done and get it over with. So I don't want to just try to uh, blow through a video and not do it any justice. So, so I'll get one out next when I get one fox or coyote that I can do a good video on and show how I skin them so all right till next time okay so here's my trap I think I was wrong yesterday uh, I think I said that I had I got it in a number two bridger but it was an MB 550 I'm gonna use reuse the same trap I've got my trap bed still here this dirt is all soaking wet so I'm actually gonna put some dried uh, dried dirt some wax dirt on here Got my remake kit. I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible here. Brought a little bit of wax dirt. Dig out my trap bed a little more. Not real big here. So 
I'm just using the same trap again. Everything here is going to smell like coyote, trap included. I'll just wipe a little bit of fur and stuff off here. Reset my trap. He bent some of these right here, chewing on them. This is a brand new 550. It's pretty stout. I've <clears throat> got a fire call going on here. All right, so I've got my trap set. I'll leave my pan way high. I dig a little hole for all my excess chain and stuff to go into. I had one there to start with. Obviously, the coyote filled it back in for me. There, yeah, seems like the trap's gonna bed in there pretty nicely. Same trap. Not sure of the weather, but I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of wax dirt underneath it. In case it does get cold. Since I'm putting it on top of it. Had one question on what I do for scent control using the knee pad and everything. For real, the knee pads for my comfort, keep my knees dry and stuff. Right now, I got skin cells just falling off of me right now. You can't stop it. They're gonna know that somebody else is here. You gotta overpower them, I think. Overpower their fear. Get the trap bedded fairly well. I use my homemade underall from an old seat cushion. Nothing fancy. Just took an old seat cushion that was going to get thrown away anyways. Cut some stuff out of it. Five fifties are nice. a little bit of wax dirt on there and I'll try to dig up some half dry dirt around here to sift on top to finish covering it in trap doesn't move I'm gonna blend it in with some of this other dirt it's sifting up not too bad Try to dig up a little scoop here.
good enough there. Now I got lots of this duff around here. I'm just gonna cover up some of this dirt markings here. A little bit of this. This is to hide it from people as much as blend it in really. A lot of foot traffic and four-wheeler traffic here. Now if I could find my two holes that I had here, I just put lure or something back in them, some bait. They're pretty much smashed in. Pretty much before there were just two tufts of grass sticking up here. And this was all just weeds. I had a hole here and a hole here. Put two baits in there. You couldn't see this set if you had if, if you had to find it. Now you could. So basically I'm gonna take a bunch of this duff here, I think. Blend that set in as good as possible. Make that a little backing there. A little backing here again. And I don't have a stake driver, which I did. I just poke another hole in here, but I'm just gonna take my little hand trowel here, garden trowel. Just gonna dig a little hole there. And on the same side, it worked once. I'll try it again. I'm not going to use any type of animal lure here right now. But I'm sure there's animal scent all over here. This is pretty much going to be it. I'm going to put a little bit of bait in here and here. Push those down to make it as inconspicuous as possible. <clears throat> I don't get worried too much about like what's my set called or anything anymore. Is it a flat set? Is it a dirt hole set? Heck, I don't know. Bait and lure bucket here, different pair of gloves. And there's probably more coyote urine and stuff here than I'd need. Just gonna take a little bit of sheep's wool down each of them little plug holes. I'm gonna put two different baits down there. Predator bait plus. And some of this new stuff I'm trying this year, this Terminator bait. Both from Cavens. I don't put a ton of bait down in there. I used to take that sheep's wool, rub it around in that bait a little bit. Let's shove it down in that hole. That hole's not real deep. This is some rocky stuff here. Basically, I'm gonna try to force the coyote, fox, whatever, right between these two tufts of grass again. It's pretty open now, though. Oh, I got that. I'm, I wanted to switch baits here. <laughs> Not too late. Sorry about my sniffing. Some people don't like that my nose is running and stuff, but a little bit of that on that sheep's wool. Poke that down in that hole. We gotta cover it all up here in Pennsylvania. You can't have anything exposed, so. Cover that up. There's some fresh bait for them. <clears throat> and there's my remake. That's it. What kind of set's it called? It's the remake set. I don't know. All lowered up. Well, not lowered up, baited up. I might fluff a little bit of this grass up to try to make it a little bit more inconspicuous to humans coming by. And that's it. Set's done. <laughs> Finished set. My kneeling pad, like I said, it's mostly for my knees. Didn't even have to use my sifter. 
Still got two little tufts of grass, one right there and there, hopefully to guide something in between the two baits, two different baits. And I'm sure there's plenty of urine here, like I already said. So that's it, that's my remake. Hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully come back here in a few days and find another critter out here. Hey everybody, it is Black Friday, and no, I'm not out shopping. You couldn't pay me to go out shopping today, no way. But coming back here checking the trap, got a pretty nice sized coon right here. Looks like it's got some pretty decent fur. I've had this trap here since the first day. This is the first time anything's connected on it, so. Actually, I came back here yesterday, stuck some chicken bones in it. And uh, got a nice, got a hind foot catch on them. And Bridger number two, did a good job on them. Looks like a really nice coon, so. I know they're not going for much, but. I'm gonna get this guy dispatched and move on down the road here. Hopefully I have more catches to show you pretty soon. <coughs> Definitely a bigger coyote. I caught three coyotes right over there by those pine trees. And I did my remake the other day over there. This is bigger here. But I came here yesterday and I put some canine force up under this little tuft of grass. There's a tuft of grass here. And I've had almost all my coyotes have been really vocal up here. Something else. This is the first, most of them are, that I've caught in the past with non vocal. <laughs> this guy is really vocal. So within about a half a mile stretch, I've caught six coyotes now. Not even a half a mile. Back to the location thing. If you're sick of hearing about this, I'm sorry, but there's a trail, like a four-wheeler trail here, through here. They split there. Another one there. Everything comes together right here. And I've, I've been doing really well right here. And it's not because I'm a great trapper or anything like that. It's I've, the one thing I've learned is location. So I'm going to get this guy dispatched, remake this set. <laughs> Something else. Got a really good catch on him on the bridger number two. Offset. Wow. Alright, I'm going to get this guy dispatched. I'm not well, there's my remake. It's pretty much just a hay mound set now, I guess. Basically, mounted up a bunch of the duff, bed my trap. I bed my trap always first, solidly. Then I, pos I position that hay mound to where I think it's most effective. And I put just a small tuft of grass out on this end. Hopefully, force them right back in the middle again. But So, all three of these locations, I have three traps set here. One here and two over there. All three have produced coyotes so far. Four total right here. So... And I was wondering, I haven't caught a fox yet still. And my brother made a good point. He said, that's why right there you're not catching the fox. Because coyotes are running them out. All right. Maybe if I keep nabbing some of these, you'll have some grays and red move back in this area. All right, so here's my uh, coyote from this morning. Uh, I know a lot of guys, not a lot of guys, but a few guys were asking me to do a video on skinning one out, how I skin out a coyote or a fox. I just want to have enough time so I do a, a decent job on on the video itself. So I still haven't done that video, but I'm going to do it as soon as I catch a coyote or a fox and I have enough time. I haven't got a single fox yet this year, but here's like the ear cartilage removed. It's completely just ripped out of there. The inner fur gets ripped right out on both ears. I tore this ear a little bit, but I think it's better to get the ear cartilage out than to leave it in there. But not a bad looking coyote. Uh, first pretty thick thick on it so we'll see how they do in the market this year all right well I hope you enjoyed that and enjoyed that vocal coyote at the end uh, like I said in the video that this has been the year of the vocal coyote for me I think I might have out, out of all the coyotes I caught in previous years I had one that actually was really vocal and this year I think I have four out of six so that's pretty cool stuff for me so I'm going to show you some of the fur that I got, and we'll wrap it up then.
All right, yeah, I even, this year I even skinned out a couple possums and stuff. Uh, a couple of them, I, sh I shot them and harvested them. So if I kill something, I skin it out. So, and it, it gives me practice skinning, fleshing, and putting stuff up on these wooden stretchers. So really, really like the wooden stretchers compared to the wire. Just does a lot nicer job, I think. So got a couple of possums. Some coyotes here. I got two incidental raccoons here. They're both really nice raccoons. And got them skinned out. Both really prime. Uh, they're both about exactly the same size. One female, one male. So two nice raccoons. Here's a coyote I just skinned the other day. And I put it up on one of the wire stretchers that I added a wooden skirt board to. I did a video on that. But it just lets you pin everything down really nice and neatly. I, I, I like them a lot. So... And here's uh, five other coyotes. The smallest coyote I caught has the thickest fur, without a doubt. I don't know if you can see, here's, the, here's probably one of the weakest ones I caught this year. And then here's one with really thick fur. I don't know if you can see or get a good feel for that on, on the video or not, but this is a pretty heavily furred one here. This one, and this one's pretty heavily furred too, but this one's the best so far. But it's a, it's definitely the shortest one out of all of them. Smallest coyote, so. Catching some fur. Still no fox. Like I said in the video, my brother, I think he pinned it down. With coyotes running rampant everywhere. It's hard for not just the deer and the turkey and the game, but other predators have a rough time hanging out with them. Especially like red fox and gray fox, so. All right, until next time, thanks again for watching, and hopefully we'll be back here in a couple weeks or so.